1993, Valpo would find its permanent home, joining the upstart Pioneer Football League with the likes of San Diego, Butler, Drake, and Dayton. From what I know, people, most people think it's just a school, uh, a conference for basketball schools, football teams. So most people know the teams that, from their basketball teams. One year later, Valpo utilized Browder's multi-threat ability to post a 7-3 and record, which was their best season since 1971. By the end of his career, Nick owned the total offense record at 6,604 yards, ranked third in passing with 5,167, and eighth in scoring with 144 career points. After graduating, he went on to have a very successful career in the Arena Football League. Browder from his own end zone in first ten. Has time, throws for Tucker, and says caught by Dutcher at the 25-20, 10-5, touchdown Fury. Uh, Nick Browder was a quarterback here. I don't know if he ever won a, a ring. I'm not so sure he did uh, play in the AFL, the Arena Football League. In 1999, things really started to heat up for the Crusaders as they went 9-2, and two, with their only losses coming at the hands of national powers Yale and Dayton. They were poised for greatness the next year with the turn of the century. Valparaiso won their first ever Pioneer Football League title in 2000, losing only one conference game. They were able to ride the receiving talents of star wideout Rob Giancola. Giancola was able to earn All-American honors while taking home school records in receiving yardage, touchdowns, and career points throughout the course of his career. Uh, All-time leading receiver. Uh, was an All-American. Chip Taylor coached him. Um, he was a deep threat. In 2002, Giancola welcomed new quarterback David Mackey to the party. Mackey, a transfer from junior college, made an immediate impact for the Crusaders. By the time the next season rolled around, the dreaded Valpo air attack was in full force. They would take home the PFL championship once again in 2003, riding Mackey's 3,763 passing yards on 238 completions, as well as 38 touchdown tosses. Valparaiso was able to defeat Moorhead State in the postseason championship game. This game remains as one of the most significant wins in recent program history. Two coaches that we had here were on that team. Uh, Coach Van Dolly and Coach Sturman. Jeff Hort was on that team. Uh, we played with Jeff. Uh, he was on the team my freshman year. He was a fifth-year senior. Um, I know that they went 7-4 and four and uh, still won the conference. Just a young gun on that championship squad, Jeff Horton would be destined for greatness. After Tom Horn mysteriously left the football program just prior to the 2005 season, Stacy Adams was named the new head coach. New coach Adams rededicated the team to running the football, a task Horton excelled at. By the beginning of his junior season, Horton was already the all-time leading rusher in school history. However, an injury later that year would put his career in jeopardy. Jeff Horton. I played with him a couple of years. He's a, he was a really good player. The injury messed him up and slowed him down a little bit towards the end of his career. But before then, he was probably one of the best running backs at this school, maybe in PFL history. He's the school's all-time leading rusher. I remember the game that he broke the record was my first game traveling as a freshman. I think it was at Wisconsin Lutheran, but uh, he was good. With that said, freshman running back John Popper and Ross Reamer stepped up for the Crusaders, creating a three-pronged running attack in 2007. That year, VU posted its best record under Adams going 5-6, and six, most notably with the home win over Butler for the newly created Hoosier Helmet Traveling Trophy. That was a great feeling. Um, I remember a lot of things from that game. I remember, I think the most vivid image is... Our seniors running over the sideline, just uh, taking that trophy uh, from the coach's hands and running away with it. Despite returning nearly the entire team the next season, Valpo would struggle, going only 3-8. and eight. The 2008 season was highlighted by an overtime win against Davidson on the school's homecoming day. The game was sealed on an interception by Anthony Curry. That was a great game. I had two interceptions that game. The game went an interception also. It was very exciting. I remember people storming the field and everything. I got hit in the head with the helmet after I took my helmet off, but it was fun. It was a good day. And I just remember Anthony Curry's big play, um, big time interception to win the game, still the game for us in overtime. I remember Curry win the game for us, and I remember the quarterback playing off the team screwing up, so we didn't really, I don't know, it was his fault they lost the game. That was a lot of scoring. I think we were down, we were down early, we came back. Um, I remember Riedel having a couple of good runs that game. I don't know why. And then Curry won the game on a defensive interception. This poor season would turn out to be Adams' downfall as the team once again continued its decline. 
In 2009, the Crusaders could only win one game. This came against Concordia University of Wisconsin on a last-second pass breakup by Eli Crawford. The end, the end of the game, they almost beat us by the Eli deflected them. They, it's a fake, fake extra point or a botched snap, and we almost ended up losing on it, but it ended up working out. Pretty much it was just a field goal. Um, it wasn't out of fate. They were actually trying to kick the field goal, and, uh, and it was a busted coverage. Um, one of the guys who was supposed to be covering their up back uh, went in to block the kick, and uh, just I just caught him out of the corner of my eye and came off of my guy and just dove for the ball and got enough of it to distract the guy. Despite their poor record, the team kept its spirits high as Captain Dave Wisniewski won the school's Positive Attitude Award. Rough season, one in ten. Um, very easily could have been on 11th but for a couple lucky plays. It was a rough year. Uh, a lot of injuries hurt us, our, killed our offense, quarterbacks, running backs, all of our skill positions. After only averaging three wins a year, Stacy Adams was relieved of his coaching duties in December of 2009. Stacy Adams uh, was, a, was a really uh, caring coach. Um, he was a player's coach, and I think sometimes that kind of hurt him. But uh, all the players knew that he respected us and that he cared about us. Stacy Adams was, I mean, he was actually a good guy. He just was not a good coach. I mean, he just, he, he knew football. He just, he just wasn't a good guy for a head coach to be in charge of a whole team and a whole university. They tried. They, I just don't think they knew what it takes to uh, run a successful Division I program. But they tried really. They all. They. I mean, they wanted to win. That's what everybody wants to do. I don't think just, they didn't go about it in the right ways. New head coach Dale Carlson was brought in to lead the Crusaders. Carlson focused on his high-powered, no-huddle offense to wear opponents down, a technique very new to the players. Well, it's a new day for Crusader football, and from this day forward, uh, we aspire to nothing but greatness. We aspire to be champions both on and off the football field, to be great representatives of this fine university uh, when we are not in the pads and when we are either walking around and running some sort of a spread offense uh, for the last 21 years. And of course it's morphed and, and developed, but uh, uh, I think we've got a pretty good handle on how to run it. As it turned out, the newly installed system took some time to get used to. Valpo struggled throughout the 2010 season, failing to win a single game. Despite the losses, the football program continues to keep their chin up heading into the 2011 campaign. Coach Carlson's been a winner where he's gone. Uh, it's taken him a few years to get there, but um, once he gets the personnel for his system that he uses, uh, he's, he's a winner. And I remember everybody was really excited about that. I don't know. We'll see. This, they say this coach turns, turns programs around. If, I don't know. They look in bad shape now, but give him a few more years to get his, get his recruits in. And we'll see what happens. Well, my goodness gracious, let me tell you the news. My head's been wet with the midnight dew. I've been down on bended knee, talking to the man from Galilee. He spoke to me with a voice so sweet, I thought I heard the shuffle of angels sweet. He called my name and my heart stood still, when he said, John, go do my will. Go tell that long-tongued liar, go and tell that...